Next curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. I'm Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and today we are honored to have a telecom industry visionary extraordinaire today, um, Chetan Sharma of Chetan Sharma Consulting, to talk about 5G leadership. And it's great to have you, Chetan. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Leonard. Thanks for having me. So I I just wanted to tell you, I am a big fan of yours. I follow your work and people should know uh, that you are the coolest guy to meet. And I really enjoy our conversations and um, they're always a learning experience uh, for me. So it's really great to have you on the show. And I I think we're going to have a really fun discussion here on uh, an, an important topic, which is 5G leadership, right? We increasingly see it mentioned, especially within our industry, as well as outside the industry, especially in, uh, you know, um, in policy discussion. So uh, I know that you do a lot of research in this area. We've actually had some chats about it. So I think this is going to be a really great opportunity for us to mutually share with the uh, the next curve audience as well as your audience, hopefully. Fantastic. Awesome. So Chet, um, why don't you um, share a little something about your company, the work that you do so that our audience is aware? Sure. So, um, you know, I've been fortunate to be in the wireless industry for since the 1G days, um, and I've seen every cycle uh, and how it has emerged, uh, the winners and losers in each cycle. Yeah. And um, my main focus has been on strategy, uh, products, and intellectual property. And mm-hmm. so all my work, whether it's research or advising clients on, on products and roadmaps, has been centered around technology and how they should uh, think about it, right? How how should yeah. they think about uh, how they pre- prepare for their uh, their own organization no. uh, for the new trends that are coming, and right. and how should they take advantage of it? So it's a strategy and consulting firm um, that advises clients around the world. Right, right. And you know, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about this great summit that you host every year? Oh, uh, thank I, you. And you know, um, I mean, you literally have the who's who in the industry attending, right? I mean, these are C-level folks. And so uh, it's a really great conference. So maybe you can share a little bit of what you typically do at this annual conference that you hold. Sure. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity uh, to talk about Mobile Future Forward, which is a summit uh, now in its 13th year. Um, Wow. So, you know, uh, more than a decade back, we start to have a forum where senior leaders can come in and kind of openly brainstorm rather yeah. than, um, you know, some prepackaged lines uh, on a stage. Uh, we wanted them to really go deeper into their thinking as to why they are doing what they're doing, uh-huh. why they're spending the money they're spending, uh, uh-huh. and connect the dots to a distant future yeah. um, that everybody is should be thinking about, everybody should yeah. be talking about. So that was the idea. And so we get some senior leaders um, and see, typically CXOs to talk about uh, and really dive deep and without kind of the marketing fluff, dive deep into right. the areas that really matter to the industry, yeah. right? Especially to the strategists uh, and the product uh-huh. guys uh, in the industry. Uh-huh. And then um, once we have kind of those kind of discussions in the morning and the afternoon, we d- dive deeper into kind of the uh, nuts and bolts issues. Um, Okay, 5G is here, but what does that mean? Uh, what's uh, what's coming and so on and so forth. You know, like 5G, we started talking about in 2015 uh, at our summit. Right. And so we were kind of earlier than mainstream media caught on to it. But mm-hmm. we were talking about, you know, why does it matter? What the gaps are? Where the opportunities are going to be? Right. And some of right. that have come to fruition, you know, starting um, you know last couple of years. Right. So the idea is to really give the strategists in the industry a view of what's coming and how should they think about it? Well, you know, I'm glad I gave you an opportunity to share the the purpose and what you do at that summit because it only um, galvanizes the fact that you're the perfect person to be talking <laughs> to about this topic of 5G leadership. So, uh, you know, thank you for that, Chetan. And um, so let why don't we start? So today we're going to be chatting about this muddy debate that is 5G leadership and this so-called race, right? There's mm-hmm. race for 5G that everyone talks about. And so we'll talk, touch on the following uh, four topics 
of discussion. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about what is 5G leadership. Right. So mm -hmm. just getting that definition out of the way before we get into anything else. Yeah. And then we'll talk about what are the competitive factors that define 5G leadership, given that, you know, you can argue that we're looking at something a little bit different with 5G than we have with prior G's. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll talk about what are the the metrics and measures that matter. And, you know, um, Chen, you recently published a uh, you know, a summary of the U.S. mobile market. Uh, it was an, it's an update on your blog, and you presented some of the metrics that probably matter. So we'll have a little bit of a chat there about sure. that, and then we'll cap things off with uh, our thoughts on what are what are the better what, what might be a better mindset for thinking about five G leadership um, mm -hmm. based on everything we discussed sure. in the yeah. previous bullet points. Yeah, so. Great. Sound good? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So why don't we start off with that first bit, which is what, I mean, what is 5G leadership? Okay, so yeah. maybe uh, to give everybody a context of <coughs> the cycle of people who might not be familiar with uh, the Gs of the industry, uh, you know, the analog days uh, back in the 90s was 1G and US kind of led the way in terms of how uh, the standards came to be and uh, the handset industry and the infrastructure industry was galvanized by what was happening in the U.S. And so clearly the leadership came from the U.S. Uh, in terms of players involved in the ecosystem. Uh, in 2G, the leadership kind of shifted to Europe where they said, well, it's not a good idea to have all these standards that everybody's building on. Right. Uh, and let's try to get behind one standard so we can get economies of scale. Right. Extremely powerful idea home run, yeah. Europe led 2G with GSM. Uh, while GSM was evolving, Japanese said, you know, this voice stuff is boring. Let's do some data, cool data stuff. iMode was birthed. And from there on, you know, 3G was dominated by the Japanese, especially uh, NTG Docomo. Um, became kind of full circle. And with 4G, uh, US took the lead. Um, 3G in the US was kind of a bust, uh, but 4G yeah. started right around the time when Apple and Google started to decouple uh, the App Store from right. the operators. Right. And that just unleashed um, all sorts of um, innovation that has grown many folds over the last decade. Right. And so it was not just the operators, but it was absolutely necessary. The access layer was absolutely necessary to have the upper layers, the applications and services right, right, foster in the right. US. And so I would say 4G was definitely uh, started uh, at, at scale in the US right. and it maintained the leadership throughout the last right. decade. Right. Uh, now as 5G comes into play, um, so clearly governments and the ecosystems and the players understood that if you have, because there are ripple effects, right? You have jobs that are created, the economies that are uh, shaped uh, and intellectual property that's created. And th there's a big economic right. impact of uh, leadership. And right. so China, which was, has always been behind until 4G, it started to catch up to the, both right. the notion of the leadership as well as what it takes to be a leader. And right. as such, it became a government prior priority for uh, the Chinese government right. that we want to be a leader in 5G. Um, and not only a leader on paper, we want to do something uh, meaningful, like embrace it to the point that the infrastructure is laid out, application right. services are built. So they are yeah. thinking about the ecosystem, yeah. uh, the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Right. And as such, you find, uh, I mean, if we set aside the telecom industry uh, on the side for a minute, you see that same thing playing out in other industries as well, where two economic giants and uh, significant trade partners, US and China, are at the forefront of many of these uh, trends and curves, which leads to very interesting dynamics around the world. And we'll, you know, we'll probably get into that. But in terms of 5G leadership, uh, oftentimes um, the debate uh, whittles down to 5G race, who is ahead, um, and depending on, you know, it reminds me of that elephant and the blind man, depending on which part of the elephant you are touching, you might have a completely different feel for it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We, so we have reduced this multidimensional 
view of the ecosystem to slices of the ecosystem. Mm. And depending on who is approaching or answering the question, yeah. you just have that dimension uh, right. as, a, as a proxy for what's happening in the so-called 5G race. Right. Uh, which obviously it's a much more nuanced and more, more fine discussion around mm. what does 5G race even mean? Uh, right. At the end right. of the day, it needs to show the effect on the economy. Like how is the economy growing, the ecosystem growing, how, how you know, clearly both US and China will have a multi-trillion dollar ecosystem built on the access, 5G playing an important role. Right, right. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's a mistake Clearly, if you say 5G race is all about number of base stations or right. number of handsets yeah. or number uh, amount of money you j- operators are generating, right? right? They, or, or the spectrum available for, uh, for, the, right. um, uh, for the operators or right. um, the penetration, right? right because right. different countries will play to their strength right. and to their understanding of the ecosystem and right. competitive landscape. Right. And are likely to, um, you know, push forth based on what yeah. they deem it right. So, right. for example, you know, Korea clearly, you know, significantly high on, yeah. you know, they want to go to the market very fast. Right. Uh, they uh, stand by their industry. Spectrum is available. Right. And so the speeds uh, available in Korea, uh, the spectrum available in Korea and the usage in Korea yeah. is and penetration of subscribers is far ahead of uh, everybody else right look at china obviously the base stations number of subs uh, is always yeah. going to be because the population yeah. size is always going to be ahead huge yeah right but then you have to look at the ecosystem how is the ecosystem developing mm. um, and there it gets complicated because you have the enterprise side you have the consumer side right uh, but i think we need to just remind people of what happened when right. us uh, stop the import of uh, or ban ZT and Huawei from having access to te- U.S. technology, and ZT overnight went uh, bankrupt. Right, it was almost going to go bankrupt. It had to be saved uh, through a uh-huh. deal, uh, and th- and it shows you the power of the ecosystem. Despite having a lead, despite having fairly advanced uh, manufacturing facilities and whatnot, right, they went bankrupt overnight, and. Um, and that's the power of the operating system. I mean, if you do not have that operating system that Android and iOS possess, which are US-based companies, then you know you can fall out of the ecosystem or parts of the market can be completely blocked from you. On the infrastructure side, not having access to chipsets can do the same. And we have seen that right. as well. Right. And so, so that dynamics has to play out as to what ecosystems are going to develop, are the underlying operating systems going to remain the same, both for devices that we know about and the devices that are to come, uh, or there are alternates that are going to come about. Uh, right. Are we going to bifurcate or splinter net yeah. and the two um, global right. ecosystems? Uh, and will that happen? Uh, we don't know. Um, and so there are multiple factors yeah. that go into the Right. understanding of what a 5g race dimension means right yeah i mean it, it, i mean it's very clear based on what you've described thus far that there are many layers to consider here now i i, I just want to get your thought here because when i have these discussions around 5g leadership i often try to um, you know, uh, categorize things in just two broad buckets. One mm-hmm. is there's the the whole technological leadership question, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe mm-hmm. going all the way up to feeding the infrastructure, you yes. know, all those mm-hmm. things that you talked about. But even below that, there's all the stuff that the 3GPP does and all the mm-hmm. technology vendors that are creating essential yeah. patents and technologies, you know, uh, the there, there's that whole level. And there's that aspect of the quote unquote race, but then above that, you have the people that are taking all those technologies, implementing the infrastructure, and um, now trying to create that ecosystem value above, let's say, the waterline, if you will, mm-hmm. <laughs> the technology yeah. waterline. Now yeah. you're converting all these things into services, and yeah. then yeah. you're now expressing all these things in enabling economic value like what you were talking about so i think when we we think i mean i mean think about that that's a lot of stuff right yeah Mm -hmm. when we're in in, and that's not just 
5G that we're talking about, where these were the previous Gs as well. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a, a fixture, almost kind of like a fixture of yes. the industry, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think about that approach? Because that is kind of like how I tried to have the discussion. Because it, it, there's there's generally two sort of, in my mind, two um, you know quite honestly, policy topics mm -hmm. that those, uh, those lay, you know, those two categories drive, you know, they're not exactly yeah. the same, right? Yeah. So I kind of uh, try to think about it as um, there's some key factors that one should yeah. study. There are governmental factors. What is the government doing in terms of policy, yeah. in terms of investment, uh -huh. uh, in terms of spectrum allocation and so on and so forth. So there are governmental yeah. factors. Uh, the second is what are the operator metrics? Um, you know, how many operators in the country? How are they deploying right. uh, 5G? Uh, what success they are having? What financial metrics there are? Mm -hmm. And then you have the ecosystem strength factors. You know, how strong is the ecosystem? You know, are you, what kind of players do you have? How many billion dollar companies do you have in your ecosystem that are in that, in, in, that are affected, that can take advantage of 5G, right? Mm -hmm. If you have one or two, it's a different story versus if they are 100. Right, right, right. And, and so, so, so that comes into factor. And then there are clear financial metrics around, you know, how much operators are making, how many, right. uh, what the semiconductor companies are, like how is each stack getting rewarded and where do those parts of gold lie in the yeah. ecosystem? You mm -hmm. know, does US have concentration of those players or China has or Europe yeah. has? Whichever country ends up having the concentration of the revenue being generated by the ecosystem right, tends right. to, you know, can five years right. hence or 10 years hence right. uh, can lay claim that we were the 5G uh, leaders because we created the enormous amount of wealth. Right, right. Yeah. And so if so, if we were to broadly talk about the the categories or the competitive factors that mm -hmm. kind of shape or drive 5G leadership. And usually when we talk about 5G leadership, we're talking about it from a regional perspective. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, you know, unlike the technology, and this is one of the reasons why I, div I separate mm -hmm. the conversations. Yes. Like yeah. if you think of technological leadership, technological leadership tends to have broad implications, right? Yes. So if you mm -hmm. look at, you know, the work that Ericsson, Qualcomm and others do mm -hmm. um, with their technologies and what they contribute uh, to 3GPP, that those technologies, that form of leadership transverses regions, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, when we think about 5G leadership, um, what, what are maybe the, the dimensions that those competitive dimensions, I think you've already mentioned one, which is like the regulatory piece, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, are, what are some of the others that you typically um, discuss with your your clients and um, your audiences? Yeah. So um, I think on the government side, clearly the spectrum is one. But I think yeah. uh, having uh, ha having an industrial policy is as important. And right. that's where I think uh, the West can learn from China uh, yeah. that they have very concrete, goal oriented, uh -huh. um, metrics oriented industrial policy that is tracking how 5G is deployed and how 5G is going to get used for a variety of industries um, on top, like infrastructure, retail, commerce, and so on and so forth, right? And so it's important to have kind of a national policy. And, you, you know, very few countries outside of China really have any semblance of a industrial policy, right? They might have some, you know, loosely coupled uh, policy, like and Portugal has one, uh, but generally, West doesn't have any um, kind of industrial policy. They talk about it in policy circles, but they don't really have a policy. It's, uh, you know, generally the free market system has worked really well so far, but I think it's time to think about industrial policy if we are going to stay competitive uh, going forward. Right. I mean, it's not just wireless, it's other areas like AI and, right. and whatnot. So uh, 5G policy, do you have a policy or not? What kind of investments is being made? Like how is the cycle of new startups being funded us is and the west in general us has done a just a remarkable job of funding the startups the thriving vc community other countries money comes from the government and it's not as easily accessible so i would say the advantage is to the us then you have um you know, on the competitive side you do need penetration deep penetration of 5g 
uh, from multiple operators so there's competition in the marketplace because once you generally reach 25 30% penetration of good 5g availability that's when magic starts to happen in the ecosystem right mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. where that's when like ubers and right. airbnb of the world really start up right i mean they Critical. they are those companies yeah. that are forming now but they will start to come you know come to life when you have availability of uh, consistent uh, 5g across multiple uh, geographies uh, so that's a factor uh, what kind of devices are available in in the marketplace at what price points is it just high end uh, china has done a really good job of getting 5g devices at a lower price point and that's right. why the pickup rate has been significantly higher uh, than the past uh, on the ecosystem front i look at um, we track um, new billion dollar revenue streams and mm-hmm. so how many of these revenue streams are being created um as a result of uh, new technologies being introduced and us right. has dom- absolutely dominated for the last uh, oh. you know 12 15 years mm-hmm. uh, but Ch- chinese are starting to come come up uh, some european countries are starting to come up um, but that's a key area right. like are you generating new ideas in the ecosystem that will generate tremendous amount of um, uh, new uh, revenue streams and then kind of financial metrics you know what's the how are the companies performing what profitability profile is there uh, are operators being able to monetize their network because you don't want operators to fail either uh, right i mean if right right because that reduces the competition that messes up with the ecosystem and so on and so forth mm-hmm. uh, so you know you have probably about 20 25 different variables that you could use to um, mm-hmm. really understand the dimensions of the right. 5g race Right. and depending on how you weigh them uh, it's very subjective how you weigh them right. you could see uh, okay you know i am really good in ecosystem but my policy on the policy front i'm weak and so i need to boost yeah. up that right and right, so you right. can come up with a model that kind of consistently benchmarks and tracks 5g yeah. progress right. Uh, right. N- not only how you are doing but how you're doing in relation to others right and so are you finding that with 5g especially when you look at the the fact that eventually okay not maybe it is this isn't a reality today we're look, we're making this transition or at least in certain aspects making a transition from this let's say best effort type network and connectivity mm-hmm. toward more of a deterministic one that supports some of the more industrial grade um requirements right whether it's for you know public urlc mm-hmm. or private you know like yeah. within indoors or whatever uh for uh you know uh, some of these more let's say localized um uh, industrial uh, great applications do, do you see that do you see that you're having to make some adjustments in you know these uh factors that you talked about because you know i think many of them were those factors were bringing over from the way we were looking at the network mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. previous generations yes, but yes. you know what what are your what what are your impressions and um, what what is it that you're actually having to do i mean do you find that you're doing an adjustment yeah you have to so you have to look at you know kind of the sub ecosystem that are forming within 5G yeah. you know whether it's uh, private 5G whether it's uh, applications that sit on private 5G and so on and so forth and so one has to um, it clearly ha- if you are into enterprise the type of application um, if it's manufacturing for example uh, it has to be deterministic it has right. to perform within the parameters that are set by the manufacturing facility in terms of bandwidth availability and consistency of that bandwidth availability as well as the latency it cannot go say higher than 20 millisecond right right, right so right. so that's on the industrial side but even if you i think eventually on the consumer side for certain apps you will have to have right. some kind of form of guarantee of service uh which 3gpp provides uh, but you have to kind of actually implement it and execute on it right uh, in terms of uh you know if you're going to do a, a ar location based game your location accuracy needs to be high and your latency needs to be yeah. probably sub 20 30 millisecond yeah. on a consistent basis otherwise the game experience will suffer uh, and that experience needs to be available across multiple operators not just one operator so right. multiple players can play 
Right. Once you get into that dimension, then what happens if there is a surge in demand? Uh, are they going to be deprioritized? Or because they are already in a session, their session will stay at the same state. And right. so you have to make those compromises in how you network and design design the 5G network. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, consumers are not going to have uh, right. tolerance uh, and yeah. good experience. And so, so yeah. clearly we are moving first from the enterprise side to have a very deterministic way of thinking about the operational metrics yeah. of a network yeah. and then moving gradually towards consumer side. Yeah, and I, I think you're touch I mean, well, you are touching on a really important point that there's there are these additional dimensions that you have to think about in terms of perf uh, performance, um, uh, service types that have certain types of requirements and it mm -hmm. makes makes the network and I mean that generically yeah. more complex, yes. right? And more mm -hmm. heterogeneous. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I think that also what I found is I think it makes this whole discussion about 5G leadership, okay, that above the waterline part, mm -hmm. yeah, complex. And is, I, yeah, I find that, complex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find that a lot of uh, folks who have been in the industry um, have struggled a little bit with the the adjustment that you are clearly talking about, mm -hmm. right? This yeah. different way of thinking about um, the the purview and the and this broader domain that five G is uh, proposing to right. uh, pursue, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it really is going get, going beyond the smartphone, right? Uh, becoming mm -hmm. more of a enterprise and private uh, network option. The, these are these are new things. Yeah, these are new uh, things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe not new, net new because some analysts are going to remind us that you know private LTE has been around for a long time. Yeah, but mm -hmm. do you know what I'm saying? These are additional. I mean, whether it's stuff that you're carrying over from previous yes. Gs, there's yes. new complexity that we have to deal with as we yes. start to talk about five G leadership. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and, and that complexity has to be abstracted from the developer. I mean, develop, just because you have 5G doesn't mean it has to, you, you cannot make their life difficult so that you can introduce a new new G. And yeah. so from a developer <laughs> point of view, they don't, they just want API and be done with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you, you know yeah. what, that is a really good point. Yeah. And I, I just listened to a podcast this morning where um, they, they were discussing what what needs to happen in order to foster a development community around 5g mm -hmm. but you're right they let's they they just want that easy button right yes. yeah. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you abstract yeah. all that complexity away and just yes. make it work which is yeah. i mean that is the tough part right and i think um um one of the things that i've been uh, you know thinking about lately as i've had a lot of these discussions around 5g leadership is that there, there we probably need to apply like a maturity lens to the stuff mm -hmm. along some of these dimensions that you've already mentioned like mm -hmm. from a regulatory perspective yeah. how mature is the environment right mm -hmm. Uh, and then using these types of uh, frameworks to benchmark, and, mm -hmm. you know, they might be good references for uh, just the ecosystem, as you put it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there's the market maturity. So uh, that might be one, uh, the deployment maturity. So yeah. whether it's coverage yeah. or what have you, mm -hmm. um, the spectrum that you're using, yes. Yes. and then, you know, quality, because yeah. I think quality has been sort of a one dimensional thing. Yes. Um, and maybe that th we, we need to start thinking in, in terms of additional dimensions so that we handle the complexity and that we're not just treating everything as like sort of this uh, monotone um, uh, network infrastructure and and services that uh, we might have been used to in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. like no, that? Oh, no. okay. Yeah, cool. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you need to, I mean, it's a complex industry, complex ecosystem, so you need... Um, you need metrics that can actually measure and do right. uh, justice to that uh, complexity. Otherwise, I mean, if you reduce it down to one or two uh, uh, marketing items, then yeah. it does nobody good. 
Yeah, well, I, I really love your your earlier comment about the the blind. Is it was it the blind man touching the elephant? Uh, yeah, they're, I mean, yeah, it's, like it, yeah, you can apply that to any industry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. No, that's great. But speaking of metrics, so mm -hmm. there's a bunch that you kind of cited in um, the um, blog post, your recent mm -hmm. blog post, right? There were things like subscription numbers. You've already mentioned a few of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what what do you think are are those metrics that matter um, today? Maybe these are some of the, the quote unquote legacy things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what are some of the your thoughts on the uh, the newer metrics that we have to start to consider? Uh, and maybe that that'll just be a, a reflection of what we've talked about in terms of these additional factors that need to be considered. Yeah. So, you know, for 5G, uh, the way I kind of think about it is um, you might have the 5G icon, but the data is, is still carried by 4G, 4G yeah. right? And so yeah. that doesn't really give us a good picture of, uh, well, is 5G being used or not? So how much traffic is being carried by the 5G network, yeah. Um, yeah. right? Okay. That's, uh, that's what you want to know. What percentage of time is the traffic being carried by the 5G network? Uh -huh. uh, what's, the, what's the traffic uh, like? What's the throughput like during peak time? Uh, when people are traveling, not give, not the average thing that we generally see in the press uh, or in reports, but you know, give give me the average in in city congested cities eight to nine. Uh, what's the average throughput people are getting? Uh, right. th those are the benchmarks. If we have not improved on those benchmarks, you know, you, the other stuff can be easily skewed because if you take a bunch of data points throughout the day, yeah, uh, you get you know you can easily see. I mean, typically you you might be seeing less than a meg uh, in some cities, yeah. uh, megabits per second, uh, but the average might be like 20, 25, 30, which is far from reality right. Of experience, right? Right. And so we need to be really honest about, you know, what's the throughput people are seeing at the time they need it uh, and be consistent about it. Um, and those KPIs are available. It's just not available to, you know, for right. public uh, consumption that right. easily. Uh, yeah. Um, and so you, I think that's what needs to get measured, uh, the consistency of that experience uh, over multiple mm -hmm. geographies or multiple periods of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna throw something out there. I, I, we kind of touched on it when we were in New York um, and we had our chat, but one mm -hmm. of the things that I, I find uh, important, something that is being, being pushed pretty heavily uh, in China is mm -hmm. uplink. Mm -hmm. uplink speeds and performance yes. right yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and being able to provide more of a symmetrical symmetrical because you yeah. know we're so used to in, in the prior g's just i mean it's all download yeah. right yeah um, and, and no one brags about uplink at all in fact you know you can have this huge downlink you know bandwidth and uh, speeds that you're registering but then the the uplink could be just like minuscule, right? Mm -hmm. But as we're looking at the future of, let's say, uh, you know, 5G getting involved in IoT, uh, you know, uh, it, that's all about data at the edge going up somewhere, right? Uh, and so there has to be some consideration, I think, in future network designs as well as the evolution of the networks uh, technologically and from a con uh, configuration perspective to accommodate more of these uh, these symmetrical um, uh, capacities uh, versus what we, we have seen in the past. Absolutely. Uh, I think as the pandemic has shown, uh, the, the symmetric nature of the video communications is absolutely yeah. necessary, um, yeah. given that so many of these conversations are taking place over a wireless link. Yeah. And so if you don't have that, then you will see uh, the breaking of the video, breaking of the audio, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, it even gets will get worse when you add other complexity on top. If you have an AR layer on top and you yeah. want to share with somebody else, you, a, you, you add a VR layer on top, it is even get, gets worse. Yeah. So unless you have that symmetry available, or the intelligence in the network, which can adjust on demand in real right. time at millisecond notice. Right. Uh, that's what's needed uh, mm -hmm. to give a user experience. So absolutely, uplink is is uh, you know extremely mm -hmm. critical mm -hmm. for the experience. Yeah, and, and so on the market front, though. Okay, so 
uh, there are a few things that you were mentioning. You had a, in, in some of your blog posts a, a good deal of focus on revenue, mm -hmm. um, you know, penetration rates and, and such. But then you also made note of you uh, made mention of the just because you have that little 5G icon doesn't necessarily mean you're on quote unquote 5G mm -hmm. might be a non standalone or uh, even I mean, if you we even go down another level, it could be 5G, but you're non standalone versus standalone, right, mm -hmm. which some might argue, well, you're not, you're not, you know, in terms of your uh, networks technological maturity it's maybe a step back if you're and you know nsa so um but what are what are from a market perspective what are some of the uh metrics that we might want to look at or think of differently um you know, one of the metrics that informs what's taking place in the um, in a given market is the usage like how yeah. are like has the usage fundamentally changed of the five from five users, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and when we went from three G to four G, the usage doubled. Um, you know, anybody with a four G iPhone was using two X. Well, it was almost a step change. Um, and whether because of, you know network was faster, devices were better, and you end up using more. And so, based on what we are seeing today, there's a two point five to three X uh, jump in usage from four G to five G. And that has been pretty cons consistent in Korea. Right. It has been pretty consistent at T-Mobile, which has a much larger footprint of uh, 5G in the US. Uh, but it has not been consistent in China, uh, which is interesting because they have the deepest uh, penetration. Right. But their usage is not usage is still growing as if 4G is continuing. Uh, mm. It's not as mm. if there's a step change in 5G, which right. is, is a mystery as to why that is not happening. Maybe the content is just not there and everything just runs like... Uh, the 4G apps, uh, and so mm. people are not switching to high fidelity or high resolution right. videos and whatnot. And so right. I think usage can inform as to are there some new apps coming in, mm. um, uh, or people are watching different types of videos or more videos because the performance is better. And so those are some kind of the consumer behavioral issues um, we need to see. Uh, we should also watch out for um, how. Enterprises, small businesses, for example, yeah. are ad adapting and adopting 5G. Right. Um, you know, clearly during the pandemic, being stuck at home, people needed a much more reliable network. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, your um, home broadband might not, uh, might, might give up if four or five people in the home are streaming at the same time. Right. right, right. And so that's why the demand for fixed wireless just right. overnight shot up. And yeah. we have created a nice multi-billion dollar market in fixed wireless now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I think the next stage is when fixed wireless and fixed net wireline network kind of work together to kind of use the bandwidth available um, to a home or to a small business uh, that doesn't degrade the experience. And so... Overnight, some of the access point business is a multi-billion dollar business just uh, on the fixed access side. And so uh, I think that will inform us what's happening in the small, medium business side. We, we should track what's happening on the enterprise front. Um, you know, how many private 5G networks are we getting? Uh, how are right. they being used? Uh, how are manufacturers using it? How are stadiums using it? How many ports are deploying 5G? And so on and so forth, right? So there are uh, kind of series of, uh, numbers that we need to track to really understand right. how things are growing in, and you know, oftentimes yeah. it's very hard to get those numbers because they're not yeah. public yet. Uh, but you can get a sense of, you know, is, is it truly growing as we thought it is growing, or right. some countries further ahead than others? And right. uh, so there are different dimensions uh, or different set of numbers that we need to track than yeah. than than four G. Right. And, and so I, I think one of the cautions I would put out there mm -hmm. uh, based on what you've mentioned so far is that there's adoption, but then there's the utilization, there's right? Adoption. It's, yeah, yeah. Adoption is one thing, but the utilization is the quality of that yeah. adoption, yes, <laughs> right? And then yeah. it's that utilization that generates some sort of end user or end market value mm -hmm. right and so yeah. uh, that that's sort of a, a takeaway i'm getting from what you presented there yeah. which i yeah. think is really mm -hmm. important yeah. and um yeah it, 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 so here's the bottom line it's mm -hmm. complex 
and I think it just goes back to that previous elephant yeah. <laughs> yeah. statement that yeah. you made, right? Yeah. The blind person with the elephant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 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 that we we really need to think. Um, we need to think deeply about this, not just in a cursory way, and then just uh, make general statements that X Y Z is leading. Because yes. when we bring it down to the policy level, yes, it's really important that we have clarity. But yes. more yeah. important than uh, just as important as clarity is that mm -hmm. that understanding is comprehensive and holistic. Otherwise, yes. yeah, you make bad policy. Yeah, right? I yeah, I completely. You know, um, you overshoot or mm -hmm. you undershoot. Or, yes, and, yeah. and um, the other thing that I, I, I've I've started to um, you know just come to a, a more I guess uh, uh, you know, an impression on is this this fact that from region to region there there's there are nuances that make it, it that do make it difficult mm -hmm. to do an apples to apples comparison regardless yes. of the yeah. metrics that you're mm -hmm. using right so yeah. comparing let's say South Korea with the U.S. Mm -hmm. the U.S. geo demographics are so different, so different from yeah. South Korea so I remember. Um, uh, 5G uh, Americas, I think it was like 2018, I, mm -hmm. I attended. I don't know if you were there. You probably were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. probably going, who's that loudmouth in the back? Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that I asked the CTOs uh, that were up on stage, I said, so, you know, you guys have been to South Korea, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were, they were touting the number, uh, of, you know, the, the rate of adoption and uh, how South Korea had reached something like 80% um, penetration mm -hmm. or uh, at least coverage, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's easy for them to do that. Yes. Um, and, and that when we look at these numbers, we, we have to really have an understanding of what they mean. Oh, without a doubt. Not yeah. just looking yeah. at the percentage. No, right? you cannot look at blindly, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, and by the way, it wasn't too, I think it was like 2000, it was 2018. Um, that's when it was, it wasn't 2017, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. Um, yeah, this is complex. So, uh, any, Hey, any last thought, because this is our last bullet item in, in terms of uh, what, what is the mindset? Maybe, you know, your last thoughts on what's a better mindset for thinking about 5g leadership. So, you know, I will think about it as, um, you know, end to end um, yeah. from, you know, what's the ecosystem for the chipsets, what's the ecosystem for the, uh, for the infrastructure, obviously mm -hmm. the operators, um, operating systems, you know, how is, how are various industries uh, adopting 5G, mm -hmm. like by verticals and what is happening? And is there a central policy framework that can apply to all of them from, from competition point of view, from a digital right. policy point of view, um, from an investment point of view. Right. Um, and so you have to look, look at holistically and end to end and see, okay, we are very well covered in area X, but on yeah. Y we need more systematic uh, regulatory frameworks or new, right. new, th new thinking. Uh, and there's no shame in adopting things that are working in some somewhere else and see, yeah. can you adapt here or not? And so I think the biggest mistakes in my mind, a lot of the countries are making is not having um, uh, an industrial policy that is tied to the competitive goals of, of the country. Right. Uh, and and yeah. leaving it to the private sector, I think is, is a mistake um, that will show up in different forms uh, over time. Right. Yeah. You know, because if you really think about it, um, a lot of the private sector innovations that have driven um, what we've seen in over the last 30 years have either been rooted in um, public initiatives, whether yes. it's NASA yeah. or the military. Yes. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. people talk about AR, VR, you know, I know. I'm sorry. I know. It doesn't come from private yeah. sector. Yes. They, you know, AR technology, um, all the immersive stuff, all these technologies have been, uh, yeah. were driven with military funding. Yeah, I mean, DARPA has been a source of uh, multi-trillion dollar innovations. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, you, we have that military agenda that's driven innovation, but I think you're absolutely right. What we, we need to have some sort of response in terms of industrial, uh, let's say, economic uh, competitive mm -hmm. planning, right? Yes. Because that's yeah. what, you know, despite what people might think, yeah, mm -hmm. it's well known that 
um, China does that, and mm-hmm. they think that that's just part of the communist economic yeah. model, but it's not. Yeah. Actually, yeah. South Korea does that. Mm-hmm. Taiwan does that. Israel has it. Canada. Portugal has it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and but the, the thing is, is um, you know, we we, we shouldn't. We sh- yeah, I, I like your point. We shouldn't delude ourselves to think that that the the public sector doesn't have a role in mm-hmm. driving innovation yeah given the fact that historically they mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. right yeah yeah so yeah well you know I, I I have to agree with a lot of what you said um and my only uh, the only thing that I would add on top of what you said is what I said earlier is you want to take all this complexity and make it a little bit simpler, just split it in two. You know, there's that technological <laughs> leadership piece yeah, and then there's yeah, that above yeah. the water line yes, 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 5G yeah. leadership piece because yeah. a lot of people, they, they struggle with the semiconductor stuff because that yes. in and of itself is yes really complex, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, uh, you know, thank you so much, Chet, and I hope you enjoyed uh, being on. That was great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, why don't you take a moment and let our audience know how they can reach out to you and, you know, find out more about the research and consulting service that you provide at, uh, you know, Chetan uh, Sharma Consulting. Thank you. Yeah, just go to ChetanSharma.com uh, or uh, check out MoldFutureForward.com and you can find all the information you need. Yeah, just right down here. So, and to our listeners and viewers, thanks for joining us. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube and Apple podcast channels. The easiest thing to do is subscribe to our research portal and media center at www.next-curve.com. And it's a great one-stop shop for all Next Curve research content and media. You'll be notified when we publish new articles and content. Uh, including this wonderful webcast with the illustrious Chetan Sharma. And again, thanks so much, Chetan. I really appreciate your coming on. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right. Take care. Until next time, be safe and healthy. Take care. Bye. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.